Hello there everyone and welcome back to the TNO, a new Millennium mod for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm your host, Mr. Albert Friedrich Spellab, but this is uh, the results of the Musnik Diary at 7 o'clock on August 18th in the year 2000, which is uh, quite interesting. There's a lot here, but we got quite a few comments to go through actually, and uh, yeah. Let's go ahead and do this one. Exterminate the root. If one seeks to eliminate weeds damaging their plants, they need not merely to cut off its leaves, but also to dig it out from the ground. We cannot merely fight the uh, group and the terror cells in Germany. We must destroy the whole of the uh, insurgents, which they are part of, and cleanse the ground they grow on, the unstable lands of Burgundy. Mobilize the soldiers, tanks, and air force, and strike down the Black Sun once again. Burgundy must become safe. If we want Germany to be safe as well. But I did ask you guys yesterday whether we should go with use public paranoia and the axe de Bosen versus no need to fear and unite against terror, as well as a gentle approach and promises of reform versus harsh hand and no negotiations with traitors, and even including rely on bureaucrats and rely on the outer party. So we've got a lot of comments to go through um, and double check all this stuff. Uh, coalition, don't really care. Uh, that group, don't really care. This stuff. Uh, the intel level is pretty low, public panic level is relatively high, and we also have the protest to deal with as well, which is great. Escalation is medium, and the current societal stability level is, well, stable. But, I did, like I said earlier, I did ask you guys yesterday which one we should do regarding... Actually, we want this one first. Ooh, a fun night shopping. Uh, panic level decrease. Well, panic level's not that high, though. Panic level, 30. It could, it could be decreased, 30... Uh, this one, panic level increase. Ooh, more conservative versus this one. So overall, I'd ask you guys which one we should do. And overall, the time of this recording, there's more support for... No need to fear. There's really no need to fear. Germany is fine. The terrorists cannot possibly attack us more. Germans need not take any precautions and must continue normal life as much as possible. We must not fry the populace too much. Too much fear rarely works. We should patrol the Weltnets too much, lest Germans feel uneasy. It's the authorities' task to pursue the as Wolf, not the task of the common German. While tragedy has occurred, it's of utmost importance to calm the people down and not sow the fear. A fun night shopping. At a large shopping mall in Hamburg, visitors were harassed by a strange group of men trying to revive the true Germany and down with the Judeo Bolshevik capitalists. The local security attempted to expel the group from the building. They resisted and were thus arrested by the Hamburg ARPA. Multiple leaflets and flags of amateur quality were seized, containing symbols used by Martin Bowman, a major opponent of the Führer Speer Senior, and harsh condemnations of German society and capitalism. The inspiration, although not in possibly direct influence, of Gunther Decker is almost certain. Germany's most prominent critic of consumerism, as it seems, this group, although unorganized and not openly militant, is far from the only one of its kind, similar events have occurred in the major cities, each incident involving anti-consumerist activity. Bankers have been threatened and store owners of foreign company branches defamed, for now these are nothing more than strongly worded letters and minor inconveniences, but the potential is worrying. It's without a doubt that the willingness of the Germans to spend and earn money has steadily increased over the last couple years. Advertisements now seem to shine on every street and blaring from every radio. The shop extenders grow larger, yet filled even with denser crowds. Some may call this a more decline in Germany, while this praises this pillar of economic prosperity. Consumerism is what keeps our economy running. It's a shame that Deckard's conservatives cannot understand this. Versus, capitalism is a tool, not a goal. This has nothing to do with ensuring growth anymore. And I'll go with that one. So, pretty much, let's see. We did want to do one of these as well. Arms dealing. Retrace our funds. Find the arsenals. Let's go with this one. Retrace our funds. If there's any place that could call itself the most desolate place in Germany, this would probably be a deserved title. Near the Ruhr area, an old factory lay abandoned at some point in the 60s, ignoring environmental regulations had left the nearby lakes and forests in a state of decay, and even the years after its closing, a sour stench filled the air. Its isolated position and hostility not led to lo lo loneliness. A community of Burgund had declared the rusting complex her home. These were the poorest of the poor. They had suffered through the heck of the Odenstadt, scarred physically and psychologically, the mental state preventing them from working or integrating into society. Bureau of Anti-Terrorism, we only ask, want to ask a few questions. We are not seeking to arrest any of you. Officer Krug had expected most of them to flee, after all. They did not legally occupy the building, were not registered, and are probably some involvement with crime. Instead, they seem to blend out of the agent's presence. It took minutes to even get a reaction from them, let alone meaningful answers. Each of them was presenting a large list of photos suspected members of the Verwolf Nefak. The results were disappointing. None of them seemed to even know who the SS Verwolfs were or had heard of the Voxala bombing. 
Google was about to leave, and he was wasting his time. As an elderly man attracted the investor's attention, or investigator's attention. <clears throat> Judging by his language and behavior, he was not a Burgundy. He was a local from Westphalia. He had not experienced him much rain and not lived in Burgundy. Still, he appeared as sickly and meager as the rest. He was likely an addict, driven here because of the Burgundy's access to drugs. But clearly, a former soldier involved in false shots, fallen into poverty. Uh... uh sickly and meager's arrest. There's a local. Oh, we'll go to the second option. I don't know. We'll see. Exterminate the root. Prerequisites. Uh, has completed focus delivering the silver bullet. Terrorism levels above 20. Death of Gundolf Kula. Alright, well, no need to fear then. United against terrorism. It's not the time for infighting among fellow Germans, nor the time for unnecessary paranoia. We are one nation, one people, we and we stand against the Himmelite devils together. From the party leaders to the families of the middle class, to the unrestful students and the youth hoping for a brighter future, to the soldiers fighting on the front lines and the retired veterans of the Russian war and the Civil War, we can all rally behind a common cause. To bring down the Black Sun and to end the terrorist menace forever. The unfortunate truth. Sir, have you been a soldier in the Burgundian War? The old man laughed uncontrollably. Yes. Yes, indeed. I fought in the Burgundian War, in the war against the Russians and against the French. Cackling, he ran away. One of Kruger's uh, colleagues sighs, he pulled something out from the pile of junk the man had been sitting on. He looked too old to fight on the Burgundian War, but there's an easy explanation for that. It was a plastic bag filled with white powder. The only war this man has fought was in the war on drugs and not on our side. Disappointing. But, and I guess that's this one. Delivering the silver bullet. Operation Neptune Spell to attack the core of the SS Vavov, ending their test activities for the foreseeable future. We've managed to find the location of the leader of the Estes Vavov. It seems as if they are protected by the Hamlet insurgents in Burgundy, hiding the deep forest. But the Black State's remnants pose no resistance to us. A superpower with all of Europe behind us still. A risk, risky task lies ahead of us. We must attack, capture, and execute the Vavov's leadership by sending a strike team to the HQ. Under code named Neptune Speer, a special force says strike team will be sent deep into enemy territory, chopping off the snake's head. The snake's head. Where are we at now? Um... Hey, less than two billion, two trillion in debt. Nice. 10, 15, 20. And for the protests, which we're completely ignoring right now, this doesn't really change too much. All right, and we're building more cities up too. 0.47 is not very good every day, but whatever. This, oh. You're claiming, oh, we have birth rates here too. Balance birth rates, baby boom, extreme boom. Significant immigration. Oh, we can't even read this. Well, all right. <clears throat> Could he get gagged in town? Mm, well, I did. Like I said, I also did ask you guys yesterday whether we should do a gentle approach versus a harsh hand. And at the time of this recording, there's more support for a gentle approach. At uh, the behest of Spahn, a more liberal minister such as Schroeder, we will reach out to the leaders of this protest in and have sit, sit down with them, both student and liberal. From there, we'll be able to know that their motives and demands going forward and weigh our options whether to backtrack from our position or to give in to the demands. The only solution is appeasement and negotiation, not tyranny and brutality, which is the only escalates tensions further. So, um, overall, you can recommend, that, in general, the uh, more liberal path, for at least what it seems like. So, um, not everyone went that way, but. And this is, while well, it's definitely not a, uh, uh, democracy here, definitely not. I still like to know what you all are thinking about. Oh. I forgot what was going to be said here. Sure. I don't care. I promises of reform. Further measures seem to be still required to quell the protest movement, and at this point, concessions may be the last sane option we have. So concessions will get a binding, in, a binding end date for the state of emergency, the return of suspended civil liberties, and a full investigation of possible ARPA overreach during the period of crisis. Also, the reforms hinted at by the current Fuhrer, the younger Speer, will be given full consideration and may become law. If we have to. If we have to. One of the comments from yesterday said, uh, as if TNO says, I have the most eye burning UI of all mods. Someone else says, This mod says, Hold my beer. Uh, other comments included. Hopefully, this mod doesn't get abandoned. It seems very interesting. And someone else says, Last I followed TNO, I thought they were going with Tabaritsky's route as a cannon for Russia, considering it was one of the harder ones to achieve without a guide and had a lot of content and flavor. Yeah. Another person said, I don't know what is worse if this mod is a bad version of modern day mod. 
or the horrendous UI. That crap makes my eyes fall off my face and migrate to the south. Someone says, that event with the drugs and German schoolgirl, Katharina, what was her name, I think gave me chills. And someone else said, and I was just getting used to the OG TNO eyesore UI. Someone else says, do all the paths you can currently go. Someone says, a great UI reminds me of Windows 95, and it really does. And, and he just replied, I'm kidding, it's, I know it's a work in progress. Someone else says, UI is hideous, I hope they change it when the mod gets fully released. They'll probably edit it and change it up, stuff like that. Uh, someone says, TNO is going to get to 2040 in less than 5 years. Uh, gentle, no need to fear. Someone says, I love the neon UI when they revamped it, but this is worse than a downgrade. Um, can anyone, someone else asks, or says, can anyone else help me? The original TNO mod keeps crashing as soon as I select a country and start playing. Someone else says, go balance the option to go dangest. Uh, do a Bukharanist hardliner path for Socialist England in TNO. I'm not sure if we can, but we'll see what we can do. Um, someone says, can you play the UK in this mod? Unfortunately, the time is recording. Only Germany has a unique focus view, really. So, someone else says, whoa, he put Jean-Marie Le Pen as president. I guess it makes sense for the mob, but he's the first to rebel against German rule. Who was resistant during his childhood, during the occupation of Germany. He's also fed in the Franco-Algerian War and of the... Uh, oh, crap, where was it? Uh... Veteran of the Frank Franco Indochina War, and actually founded the political party Le Front National, which is known as uh, Le Rassemblement National, directed by his daughter Marine Le Pen. Or Marie? Marie Le Pen? I don't know, something about French politics. So, <clears throat> there's actually quite a few comments to go through. Someone says, I love this user inter interface. Uh, someone else says, Next we wait for the TRO demo. Um, yeah, someone else talking about the UI. Cool, 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 cool. Yep, 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 yep. Someone else says, Jean Marie Le Pen solos today. And my eyes just die, thanks. Someone says, What happened to China? That's a good question. And we'll get there in just a minute. Cool. I think that's most of the comments of the time of this recording. But China. The Republic of China, led by Hu Jintao. Oh. Huh. Mongolia. Uh, Japan still exists for now. Koichi Kato? 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 Who's down in Vietnam? Kong Min Du. Who's here? John Howard. Michael Cullen. India? With no Pakistan, huh? Okay. Well, who's this? Why is Afghanistan into three parts? The Afghan State, Council Generals, Akhtar Mansur, and the Kram Yari. Also here. Economic spheres and strategic aid, so you can like edit stuff like here really quickly. So, Mr. Influence, which costs command power, but it's fine. The matter of immigration. With the economy at an all time high, a major problem has struck Germany over employment. Since the last few decades, Germany has generously given out visas to foreign workers. Both specialized experts and unskilled laborers are imported from across the Europe, Pakistan, and beyond, contributing greatly to our prosperity. In some cities, for example, highly inter and highly internationally connected to Hamburg. Ethnic now Germans make up as much as 10% of the population, primarily they originate from Eastern Europe and other Europe pack nations. An entirely different group, however, are the Burgundians, which do not migrate out of economic opportunities, but out of the catastrophic, catastrophic conditions of Burgundy itself. Many of these immigrants face harsh reprisals in their daily life. Authorities constantly turn a blind eye to certain incidents, especially since the rise of Gunther Deckert. While some cities like Frankfurt or Hamburg are relatively welcoming to foreigners due to their reformist godlike like administration, others like Danzig or Nuremberg treat non-Germans as second-class citizens. However, the current methods have faced heavy criticism from both reformists and conservative factions. Obviously, the Hitlerites strictly oppose immigration, not even within the Reichsadler. Reichslander, or Pact. The center wing is somewhat more nuanced, with people such as the influential billionaire Gerhard Frey supporting immigration in a reasonable manner. Others differentiating harshly between European and non-European foreigners. Schroeder, Kohl, and other reformers have pushed for further integration and opportunities for non-Germans. What Hitler warned us not to do, as well as possible if and only from Europe Pact nations. Situations work for us so far as long as it ensures economic growth. This is 21st century. Some may not like it, but isolationism and xenophobia will not advance Germany. Oh crap. Uh, social stability? Very stable. Nice. The crisis escalates, huh? It seems that half measures won't or aren't working. 
Despite our best efforts, every day the streets teem with more and more disgruntled Germans protesting the emergency measures. Protesters marching against the crackdowns and protesters marching for a tougher stance against the terrorists are united by their distaste for the government. Marchers grow to riots as tensions approach a boiling point and Germans continue to burn. Just as there is a division among the upstart rioters, so too is there a division at the top of the party. Whichever plan we choose, we'll have to come fully and both the Fuhrer and Musnick know the legacy of the great reformer hangs in the balance. Let's go do Krieg and Denter. The town's come to make it official. No longer is this a fight to crack down the monsters of the black state. No, it's become something greater. We'll approach the Colossian de Nacionen to take international measures against terrorism to hunt and exterminate a common foe, the menace of terror. Beyond this goal, we can rally behind Americans, Japanese, Germans, Chinese, and even Soviets. Himmler's network spread throughout Europe and beyond must come to an end. We declare the Kriegen den Gegen den Terror, the war on terror. Marching to Bergen. It seems that Bogan, he has a change of bits since Himmler's death. The NSDAP politicians in the old fear thought that after the madman's death they would collapse, but it seems that they did not. Jumanis and flames and local forces cannot control the situation in Burgundy. Once again, we have to crush Himmler's black spawn once more. We have to fight the demons of the SS, and once more we will crush them. For the innocents that died in Germania. For the ones that perished under the Burgundian reign. For the brave German soldiers killed by the insurgents. Once more we shall execute false shots. A new executive order has been issued to the hair. March into Burgund! Nice. Pretty quick. Pretty quick. Which is good. Eclipse the Black Sun. The situation in Burgundy has turned from bad to worse. Huh. A coalition of SS insurgents has risen up in open rebellion, and terror cells of the so-called SS Vevov, a particularly ruthless part of their alliance, are spreading fear and paranoia throughout the land, killing civilians and soldiers alike. Only with their death can Germany find peace again. The fear has ordered even more troops to move into Burgundy, for it's time to bring down Himmler's devils and eclipse the Black Sun once and for all. Well then. Okay. The Crystal Problem. Confidential Ordnungspolizei document for the Führer and the administration only. Sadly, the methamphetamine production and trade in Germany has steadily increased ever since the end of the initial invasion of Bur uh, Burgundy in 1996. Gustav, as it is referred to in consumer circles, originates from highly aggressive advanced pervitin used by Himmler's regime to boost the productivity of the workers in Rodomo and other camps. A shadow that followed the liberation, although freeing the Burgundian people from the SS's hackish rule. In the scarred and completely devastated ruins of the former Oldenstadt, the methamphetamine stimulant was now used by the impoverished masses. Many of them already were addicted due to its use as a work power enhancer, and the camp soon improvised production sites, popped up all over the occupation zone. These sites quickly spread to German metropolises as well, due to Burgundian refugees and the drug was increasingly consumed by poor, mostly homeless Germans. As in now, Kristall is the most consumed illegal drug in the entirety of Germany, and many countries in the Europacht, the Reichslander, and even the KDN have issued warnings and demanded action to be taken against methamphetamine tracking, although it does not bring much relief. Luckily, gang crime and criminal organization activity, which tends to flourish under profitable drug markets, remains stagnant. A dire situation. Prepare the op for further operations. And the Voxala avenged. Well, I kind of have to wait. <clears throat> Crack down. <coughs> KDN expansion, or integration. Alright. Success, huh? Sure. Books all avenged, the Himmlerite remnants like crush, their fighting forces destroyed, their terror cells shattered, the leaders is dead and captured. While the attack on the court of Germany has left a permanent scar like all wounds, it will heal over time. Never again will the de demons of the Black Sun harm our people, never again will the Black State crawl out of the shadows. For now, peace has returned to Germany and for lust for revenge has been satisfied. Rely on the outer party. Some dissidents claim that the NSDAP is an instrument to mask the rule of a small oligarchy. This isn't true. We're still a part of the German Arbit Arbiter, and we will put great effort in showing that our affection to the average citizen is honest. The foundations of the NSDAP are the workers and soldiers since our foundation in 1920. Increased amount of uh, Bekelmesh and rallies. And as well as government funding for middle class and lower class projects, I also sent some active party members on scouting missions to find prominent influential members of the working party. Maybe these people are more willing to side with our moderate cause after they were lifted in positions that suits them more. And then a vertical structure. Oh, there's nothing here. Horizontal structure. With the situation getting more and more out of hand, we need new strategies. We need people who know their local, local situation best. We need leadership at the front lines. Even though leadership from the top to bottom is the safest and best, it's sometimes a little inflexible. Our current situations could be a good opportunity to look for potential future talented individuals, which will give their blood and their heart to Germany. 
should be great. Also, how's, how's trade? Trade or the economy, really? That's, that's a little ridiculous. A debate on the Veltnets. Ah, video spiel of mass death dry dry unvessish. It's truly mind blowing how stupid the Americans on this side are. Some just claim that they're Spasinas, set up the slavery system. Do they have no education at all? He's the one to abolish it. The hypocritical Americans don't like the fact, but Germany does more for freedom and equality than they do. Uh, next person. You seriously bought Miss Nigg and his companions? When the people finally learn from the past, one day black, gold, and red will place a swastika. The Soviets took Hector Zinsert in 1981. Also, are you seriously proud of the Soviets because you don't have the will to send your own man and rattle up Bolshevik meat shields who committed countless crimes on civilians to do your job? I don't care, only a dead German is a good German. The Soviets don't kill enough of your kind when they entered Leningrad and Volga. Average America, when Germany does something, it's genocide. When America retaliates or something, it's help their freedom. You're making, you people are making me sick. I honestly just wish the Hawaiian mess crisis had escalated. Uh, <laughs> average liberal, now you are a Zensier Turk. That's what Spaz Judeo Capitalist appeasement did to Germany. Raffle, 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 a Hitler writer either at uh, uh, nine years stuck in the year 1951. That's why we need a second Sondergericht. Do you plan Ost Democracy, Demokuti, Slave Revolt, Slav Kavin, Hausstein, Gang of Four, Verberand, Nuremberg Laws, Nuremberg, uh, Protectorate of Bohemia, Moravia, Protector of Bohemian Marn. How all of you, Zinsert, still believing in the Reich, the future of Germany, and doing the degenerate Sperkel Hedrisch? If the other show was real, you would be able to send the Rodomo. Oh my god, how condensed can a person be? See you under the black sun, subhumans. An anonymity doesn't always bring out the best in people. Well, anyone could have told you that. And how are the protests doing? 5 and 70? Well, on the outer party? And we're going to go with a vertical structure for now, anyways. But, cracked on a factionalism. In the NSDAP presents itself as the United and Only Party of Germany, the situation behind the official facade shows a different reality. The party is divided more than ever. Over the years, Musnick's grip over the parties has even gotten less tight. The formers and reactionaries are calling for changes of direction, but not only the ideological differences are tearing the party apart, but the different social standings inside the party are also competing for control over the apparatus. Unless something is done, our control crumbles each day. We must put an end to these misleads, calls, and restore the NSDAP to its past unity and glory. So negotiate? I guess we could probably do that one. But I don't keep going with this one. Operation... Yeah. Oh, terrorist intel level. We need more terrorist intel level. Calm the population. Uh, look at the weapons. Find their arsenals. Go and do that one. Oh, vertical structure. Root of the SS Verbuff. In search for the culprits of the Vauxhall bombing, the ones pulling the strings behind that network that was the SS Verbuff, Officer Kruger had visited the most poor, most rot, and most hopeless places across the country. Despite the enormous rise of living standards, productivity, and innovation, there remained those left behind by Germany's growth. They had become disillusioned with the promises of wealth and stability without work. Without any faith in the future, their frustration grew. Their dreams had been crushed, and soon they turned bitter and envious. From the impoverished youth, a lost generation had formed out of them, the SS Verbuff arose. In the outskirts of Strasbourg, it all seemed to merge into a gigantic sum of stagnation, abandonment, and crime. It was not a coincidence that the SS Verbuff formed here. An apartment block, a spray painted black sun covering its concrete walls, stood empty, as evidence suggests that SS Verbuff had the first gathered here during the late 90s. Judging by the symbols, they had not even tried to hide their activities, but it was also possible that sympathizers had painted them. After all, in this era, they were viewed as heroes, striking fear to the hated middle class and political elite. Although the building was abandoned, Kruger found ammunition and weapons in a locked room in the basement. They seemed to be much older than any Verbuff activity hour. It was a secret weapon storage from the Civil War, which the terrorists had used later. It must have been left by Hedrich's troops from the Civil War, by Speer's troops. Who with Hedrich's? The liberal menace? Reactionary threat? We're really pulling towards reformists here, because that's what actually a lot of you guys said, but we'll see. Deckard is a fool. We are the core of Europe, and we are responsible for the wealth of this continent. Instead of bombs for subjugation, we use loans. Instead of risking slave revolts, we keep them quiet with some freedom. The old ways of these reactionaries are over. Everything they demand is nothing more than a power fantasy of being the next Hitler. They'll destroy us to build an influence that we carefully instilled over the past couple decades. The Reich stands for the human era of peace, stability, and prosperity. Success in investigations. Our suspicions have been confirmed since it was Hedrich's SS which controlled Strasbourg in the time of the German Civil War. The weapons originally belonged to him. As we found out, the SS Verbal has gathered weapons used uh, <clears throat> by the predecessor's hidden dep depots across West Germany. By locating and observing them, we'll capture a larger number of Verbal equipment and possibly even more members. This should provide us for the insight. Nice. So now we're at level 20. We should be able to do this. Oh, this will be above 20, so we have to wait. God dang it, I hate that. I don't like waiting. Liberal menace. If you're worried about that, please go ahead.
Shpia's legacy prevails. Abba Shpia Sr. found himself in a similar situation as we today. We had, he had to fight the bombing ants, goring nuts, and butchers, Heydrich and Himmler. And even out of the struggle of the Civil War, the traitors, liberals, and reactionaries threatened to overthrow the new German National Socialism. Just as he solidifies reign, we must do the same to balance out the faction, unite the NSDAP once more. We have a great example to follow, and the spheres of wisdom are still relevant to this day. Let us step in the footsteps and directions party on a safe and prosperous course into the future. World peace effort. Now nah, we're good. We vote no. Huh. Alright, so how's it looking right now? This is 45%. Does this has changed at all? It might not have. Puppet Fear. More, slightly more growth. Blow to NSDAP. Barbara's getting slightly better, though. It's pretty nice. I'm not sure for how effective that will actually really be, but, you know, we will see. Consumer goods. Construction. We're doing it anyways. Nice. Keep on building. Nice. We will never run enough stuff to build there. And then we'll probably look at their weapons. Yeah, and then we gotta do that one. So. <clears throat> Organized crime, a problem found in Central America and in the metropolises of America, Japan, and China, but on Germany. There were no cartels, there was no mafia, yakuza, no triads. Sure, like everywhere else, the law was broken sometimes. Some unfortunate souls entered the realm of drugs and violence day by day, year by year. But in comparison to most of the world, it was surprisingly low. What causes? Surveillance? Economic upheaval? Education? Germany was not perfect, but it was safe. Of course, this was too good to be true. During the 90s, the Burgundian refugee crisis, criminal gangs had risen in the worst districts of German cities. Strauss and Banden taking over poor neighborhoods. They were mainly based around drugs and prostitution. Officer Kruger had recently been informed about a major raid under Strauss and Bond's hideout in Breslau. The police had expected to find drugs and regular firearms. Instead, an entire room full of military grade equipment. Weapons and explosives were seized. Even more shocking, the SS Vavvos symbol of the Black Sun had been carved on the item's packages. The question of the weapon's origins remains. With well, the Polish border nearby, it's quite possible they did not originate from Germany. However, they could also come from Silesia or Saxony. Border uh, land uh, Poland's clothes must search within Germany proper. I don't know. Let's save the game just in case. Hmm. Uh, let's just search within Germany because that makes more sense than hiding out in Poland. Count the population, huh? Anything here? Stable. Negotiate. Failure. Okay, disappointing. The Polish boards with all Euro Pact members and Reichslander is with accessions open and unrestricted. We now find more tricks inside Germany and the available connections in Reichsland of Poland that cover the tracks by now. Or Reichsland Poland. What? Well, oh, would you look at that? It's actually success in the SS Vevel for this investigation. Thousands of Germans, Poles, and other Euro Pact citizens pass through the open German Polish border each day, but sometimes illegal goods as well. By learning the Reichsland authorities in Warsaw about terrorist arms trafficking. Across the border, the local Polish police was able to raid multiple sites connected to the black market and to the SS Vevov itself. For further inside, Operation Neptune and Speer. And negotiate with the protesters? Death of Gunfeld Kola. Somewhere along the foothills of the Burgundian Hills lied an abandoned village. <clears throat> it most likely had been left to decay not just after the war, but in the early phases of the Oldenstadt, probably in the 50s or 60s. Since the SS did not build rural village settlements and the architecture was too old to be constructed after the liberation, it was a pre burgundian French town which had, like many others, solely existed as a nameless footnote in the administration. As it seems, evidence has linked this footnote to none other than the leader of the SS Vevov Gundad, Gundalf Kala, a suspicion that was confirmed via satellite and AIA scout footage. Activity in the town hall, trucks arriving at the village, signs of electric light. The SS Vevov's leadership had established the town as an HQ. Within a day, an extremely risky operation was prepared, Operation Neptune Speer, the capture and killing of Gundolf uh, Kola and the Vevov's leadership. Close to midnight, helicopters uh, with KSK Special Forces arrived in and around the village. They were immediately met with gunfire and a long, exhausting battle for each building ensued as the exit points of the town were too blockaded. Finally, the town all was stormed after continuous helicopter raids. The SS Vevov troops were not child soldiers, all malnourished conscripts like Bergvet's regular troops. They were well trained, well armed, terrorists, many of them even Germans with Wehrmacht experience. And the KSK suffered many losses. Ultimately, however, the entry or entirety of the Vevov was dead, and the tunnels which were to be used as an escape process destroyed in the Gundolf Kola shot. 
That was a message of such impact that the Fuhrer himself forced the autopsy multiple times to confirm that it was indeed his corpse. Finally, televisions across the Euro popped and beyond interrupted their program to inform about the killing of the man behind the Vauxhall massacre, probably the most hated man of the continent, a war these brave SKS or KSK commandos with everything that we can offer. With the eradication of the SS Vanwolf's leadership, the terrorism problem has finally been solved. Although they'll never forget their crimes, Germany can finally rest as the victims of an avenged. Alright, and then we can do this one. If you're gonna read this again, please go ahead. And then we still gotta do the cross this escalates. With seeds of hope. Protests have de-escalated with the party taking a slightly lighter course, and even fulfilling some of their demands, although incidents of violence and harsh orpal actions still take place. The movement is larger than ever and it seems as if the government is willing to negotiate with them. Perhaps a brighter future still awaits for the German people, and words that are not even dared to whisper months ago now find themselves on posters shouted by the masses, even spoken in the halls of Germania. The road ahead itself is long, dangerous, risky, and hard, but that is not of importance. The young men of Germany can dream again. Victory over terrorism. With the news <clears throat> of Gundolf Gola's death, the defeat of the bow at insurgency and the extermination of the SS Wehrwolf, it seems as if Germany is finally safe again. Although the damage caused by them was horrendous and pushed the Reich into a deep crisis, eventually justice has been delivered. Images of the burning Vauxhall of the bloodbath amongst innocent German youths, celebrating while suddenly struck by a horrendous death, will not disappear from the nation's memory, but neither will the death of the man who caused it all. The victory in Burgundy and the final victory of civilization of sanity against deprived fanatics. The Vauxhall has not only been fully repaired, but also received an extension in a glass hall, serving as both a museum and a monument to honor the fallen. Jimmy Triumphs! Ah. Can we do both? I don't want to increase things for now. We're already doing pretty darn well, so we'll see. Alright. Medium. Very stable. We're supposed to escalate? Okay, we'll escalate. Screw it. We'll see what we can do, because if not, then we'll have to use cons commands for this. Which I really don't want to do. Um, well, now it's 5 and 90. It's very stable now. So, um, are we supposed to wait here for something? Is it supposed to auto go? I'm not in honestly entirely sure. So, I, oh, manifest of human rights. Or, uh, who cares about that? Um,. Maybe we should have escalated things further before? Maybe? Well... Oh, oh, we can negotiate with them again. Well, I guess we'll do FA and focus... Don't know, checks. Well, alright, we'll try it. Grass escalates. Let's we'll do a season of hope. I guess. Turning point. Protesters have risked it all. They've made a step too far by turning on the center of Germania itself. On the core of the government provoking Musnik's regime. The tensions of the past years have reached a breaking point already. The more extreme parts of the military are mobilizing. Both sides are heading for a collision with the confrontation in in inevitable. A die is cast. Whatever happens now is one thing certain. It will decide Germany's fate. Uh, we do escalate things pretty, pretty darn quickly, I thought. Our revival of the Czech language. Under the iron fist of the protector of Bohemia and Moravia, Czech language and culture effectively vanished, apart from overseas uh, emig emigrates. Well, Speer Senior. <clears throat> Recognizing the Czechs as honorary Aryans and integrating them with the protectorate into Germany proper, fate took a much different turn for the Czech people. They were neither recognized as an independent group nor subjugated as a conquered people. Instead, they now simply were Germans, in the same way Bavarians, Hessians, and Pomeranians, the Czechs, and German languages merged into a local dialect. And while the population was not ethnically German and only someone identified with the Reich, its pre war culture changed beyond recognition. The drastic societal changes followed the Second West Russian War led to renewed interest in the Czech native language. Once regards as anachronistic and rural, Czech was spoken again, quickly spreading from intellectual circles to the wider population, originally viewed with suspicion by the government over fears of separatism. It soon became apparent that the movement was merely of cultural, not nationalist nature. Two languages can be heard in the streets of Prague again, and the more reformist Gautleitung of Bohemia has even gone so far as to make its administration bilingual, a move not without controversy. It's an idea, not a matter of languages. One of our Bohemian Moravian states will become Czech. Eh, hey, I don't know about that one. Well, it's Neo Czech. It's Bumish. Germanization of Czech culture. So, I think that's pretty much it. There's really not much else here. 
Um, we could escalate things, but I think that's pretty much it for us. Oh, Kyrgyzstan exists. There's two Kyrgyzstans. Well, other than that, I, I assume that's it. So, if you enjoyed the little video in the campaign, I guess, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below. Let me know what you thought, what this uh, demo for this mod is like. Here's the Europact Commission, or Europact. Uh, here is Organization of Free Nations. And Japan doesn't exist anymore. Or at least they were... Okay, and we have the Democratic Republic of Korea too, so... Thanks for watching, and have a great, great, great rest of your day!